Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Um, we're going to be talking about Florence today, but we're also going to be talking about the other, am I too loud? Um, the other programs that we have. So I want to start off with a little bit of an overview of the different programs that Los Rios offers. And the really cool thing about the, the Los Rios program is you're still enrolled as a Los Rios student. You're still enrolled paying community college tuition fees um, and getting credits here at the Los Rios school. So for spring, we have a semester program and our semester program works such that we take our 16 week semester and we shorten it to a 12 week semester and you get the same 12 units, full load credit, over there in either Florence or in London, depending on the semester. Um, you have several different classes to, to choose from, and I'll talk more about that in the program as we go a little bit further on. But that's our semester program. So it gives you a full, basically 12 weeks, actually 13 weeks, because we give you a spring break in there, um, to go ahead and kind of get to know Florence or London or wherever you happen to be at for that semester. We also have three separate summer programs, and our summer pro programs are a little bit different. They're either four or five weeks, depending on the program. We have one that goes to London, and it's a history class that's taught in London, I mean, a psychology class taught in London, and a history class taught in Florence, or a history class taught in Paris. And those are a single class. So you take a one, either three or four unit class, and your entire four weeks there, you're basically learning about you know, history of Paris or psychology of British life and culture in London. Um, so again, there's two different options and the programs work slightly differently, um, but we'll kind of have time for both of those. I do have some handouts at the back. The ones on that side are all for the Spring Florence program because that's the one we're taking ex ap accepting applications for now. Then I have some on the summer program and our London program that are coming up. I also have a sign-in sheet. So at the end of this, if you didn't sign in originally, you don't have to sign in. But if you want more information, if you put your email address on there and check which programs you're interested in, you can then, I will then make sure those faculty members get your email address so they can update you with anything that, as it goes for whichever program you're interested in. So, so starting off, this is Florence, okay? This is the Duomo here. And literally, you get the opportunity when you're doing study abroad to live as a resident in that country. So if you are living in Florence, Italy, uh, you will get to walk along the Arno, see the, the beautiful architecture. Um, this here is a picture from, of the Ponte Vecchio, which is one of the oldest bridges in uh, in Florence. And this here is actually a picture walking across the Ponte Vecchio. And the Ponte Vecchio um, is the only bridge that survived World War II. It originally was a bunch of butcher shops on there where they would cut up the meat and kind of toss it into the river. And one of the kings, and I'm sure this gentleman walking in can tell me which one, um, decided he didn't like that idea so much. So he actually changed it over and made it a bunch of gold shops. Well, now it's kind of a tourist area with a lot of different shops. So you can walk across the Ponte Vecchio, um, do your shopping there, as well as other things. So, all right. So with a semester class, you take a full 12 unit load. Um, one of those classes will be the life and culture class. So in Italy, it'll be Italian life and culture. If you go on the London program, it'll be English life and culture. All of the classes are taught by American or by community college instructors. So they're all taught in English. It's all the same curriculum you would get as if you were taking the class here. So you get the same credit as if you were taking the class here. There are a lot of different course options and we condense the semester into a 12 week semester. And what happens is you actually do six weeks and then because studying abroad is so challenging, we make sure you get a week off, okay? And then you come back and do the last six weeks. So you actually get a week off in there to be able to go do traveling or whatever else you are interested in. So the classes for this spring, and they do change each semester. So if you're thinking about this spring, these will the be the classes that are offered. If you're looking in the fall, there will be different classes. And next spring, we'll go to Florence again, and it'll be different classes. But I'm gonna be teaching, I teach psychology, so I will be teaching these psychology classes over in um, Italy, we have literature classes, film classes, politics cla uh, comparative politics classes, and all of those classes are also on the handout. So if you're trying to figure out how this fits in your ed plan, because you want to stay on, on task to graduation, um, you can basically take that in with you to the counselor and say, all right, which one of these meet, meet the requirements that I need? And I'll tell you that when I, um, when I was an undergrad, I didn't do study abroad, and I would have loved to do study abroad. But there were two reasons that I didn't. One is I thought it would slow down my graduation, because I figured I'd be taking a bunch of classes that didn't really count for anything, um, which I now know is not true. And the other is I figured I couldn't afford it, which had I been willing to be a little bit more assertive and aggressive in trying to find scholarships, I probably could have gone. I didn't realize that. So we'll talk a little bit more about kind of those options a little bit later too. So again, if you find that this sounds like something, this would be a perfect fit for you, and you get stuck at the cost, come see me. Make sure we can talk through all the options and see if there's a way to maybe make it work. 
All right, this is the Santa Croce um, Church. And our AIFS office, we partner with AIFS um, in Florence. And the school itself is basically or kind of around the corner, back through um, a small street over there. And one of my favorite, and I was only there a short period of time, so Bill's going to talk a little bit later who's been to Florence a lot, and he can probably tell you better places to go eat. But one of my favorite gelato shops is actually right around the corner from the school. So this is the AIFS, AIFS, AIFS office in the classroom, and it's kind of unassuming, easy to miss when you first go by. Once you go in, I love this, I get to start going up the stairs, and it's like, you're almost there, you're almost there. Once you get there, okay, and it's worth the three flight steps, um, three flights of steps, um, you'll see a countertop, you go in and like, go left, there's a countertop, and there are some very friendly people there. And the nice part about our AIFS staff is they're amazing. Okay? I actually had the opportunity to teach in the London Summer Program, and I was so impressed with how much they know about the area, how willing they are to help students. They are just always kind of on the mark. So these are a great resource for you if you want to plan weekend trips. These are the individuals who can definitely tell you good places to go, and eh, maybe this, this hostel wasn't so great when people went before and so forth. So it's a really awesome opportunity to get some more information. They also provide um, support throughout the whole program. So the classrooms, and I've heard they've been remodeled since I went there um, the year before last, but they're basically kind of you, you, typical looking classrooms. However, what I didn't do was I didn't take a picture looking up, which seems like a strange thing to do, but they have these beautiful frescoes on the ceiling, um, and so you kind of lose that effect in my pictures. But they're basically set up as regular classrooms. They have a student area, and again, this may have changed a little bit since I was there, but they have some computers that are available for students. We have Wi-Fi access available in the student area and in the classrooms, um, and a little kind of lounge area. I will tell you, though, that uh, Florence, Italy, when you have 100 people all trying to log on to the same Wi-Fi at once, sometimes it gets a little slower. So one of the things that is the you know, beauty of traveling, in my opinion, is that you get to go somewhere where things are different meaning they don't always work the way you want them to <laughs> or the way you expect them to. But that's kind of the beauty of traveling. If you wanted it to be exactly like it is here, stay here. Okay. So you'll have some things that are, you'll love even more and some things that you're like, okay, this is, you know, I have to plan my, my Wi-Fi a little bit different, do things different. They've actually added another uh, server, I believe, at the school too. But you will have Wi-Fi access at the school, at your home, um, and as well as several different places throughout uh, the city that you can kind of tap into Wi-Fi. The dates for this particular program, it goes at the end of January through the end of April. So those are our 13, week, 13 weeks that we'll be there. Our classes are Monday through Thursday. We do actually have the first two day of classes are kind of an orientation, a walk around the city, getting you familiar with things. So we have to make up those two classes on the first two Fridays. So I do recommend that if you're planning weekend travel, you wait until you get over there for a couple of reasons. One is that you may find that when you get over there, there's a bunch of people who have similar interests to you and would also like to go to the same places. Um, the other thing is that AIFS plans some weekend trips that are a wonderful additional option. Um, and you may find that you would really rather go see Venice on that trip than on your own. So you know, kind of hold off on some of your planning until you get over there. But the nice thing about the three-day weekends is that it's very inexpensive to travel around Europe. So literally hopping on a plane and going to Paris for the weekend, you know, flight over for $50 or whatever you can find, um, is doable. So it's a lot easier to kind of get out and travel beyond Florence. Um, you have a couple of different options for living. We have apartment options and homestay options. The apartment options will be two individuals to a room in an either two or three bedroom apartment. So they'll be either four or six individuals. They're same sex apartments. They're scattered throughout the downtown area. So you aren't all clustered in one area. You're embedded with people who are living there. You've got the individual family next door. You've got a single mom downstairs. You've got, you're living in Florence, not in kind of an isolated um, you know, study abroad area. So all the apartments will be different. They'll all look a little bit different. Um, and AIFS sets all of those up. They'll actually match you with someone. And when you fill out the application to apply, you'll have the opportunity to tell a little bit about yourself. And if you do, I recommend you tell a little bit about yourself, even if it's just, I love this type of music. Because that's the information they have to kind of try and match you with somebody who they think might be a good, a good fit. You also have the option to request someone. So if you and a friend are going over and you want to be roommates, awesome. You can request that. And if you both request each other, they'll assign it that way. So lots of options there. All of the apartments are actually in the downtown area. So they're in the center area. They're going to be a 20 to 30 minute walk from the classroom um, and pretty much everything else that you would want to get to. It's a really small walking town. And that's the nice thing about Florence is it really does have that small town where 
You know, you get to know this is, your, this is your grocery store, this is your barista, this is the places that you go and they start to recognize you. So you start to feel more like a resident than a tourist. I was talking to someone who came back even from the summer program when they were only there for five weeks, and um, he said, yeah, by the end you're irritated with the tourists. Like, you're like, ah, oh, because you feel like, you know, this is your place, you live there. Um, but all the apartments are in the downtown area, walking distance, really close to where you're taking classes. Um, this is our kind of map here, and I just want to give you kind of an idea. We're talking about the classrooms being over here. Here's the Arno. Here's the Duomo. Here's the, um, the uh, train station. And basically, you can hop on the train station and go just about anywhere you want to get to. So um, you're really walking distance from that as well, the Ponte Vecchio, the Palazzo Pitti. I mean, a lot of different areas to go to. Now, this is the Florence program. When we're talking about the London program, it works very similarly. You have a homestay or an apartment option. Um, but London is a larger city, and so if you're looking at the London Fall one, you will actually have a travel pass. So you'll have a pass for the metro. You can basically go on the tube. Um, you will still be 20 to 30 minutes from class, but you'll actually be possibly 20 to 30 minute tube ride, which is really nothing in London. Um, so again, they're, they're spread out, or they actually tend to be more centralized in London. Um, so you'll be with other uh, students in their student apartments. The homestay option is really nice either for Florence or for London because it gives you, it gives you an opportunity to live with a family, um, various family types of units um, there in the area. Um, it, also tends to, it also includes a breakfast if, during the weekdays, and you'll have access to laundry services. So there's, you know, again, two different options. Um, sometimes people ask, like, which one? And what I have pretty much heard from everybody that went is they loved whatever they chose. So my guess is the ones who said the homestay was perfect, if they'd have chosen an apartment, would probably have said the same about the apartment. But everybody seems to have loved the option that worked for them at the time. Program fees. So for Florence, it is just under $8,000. The program fee includes your first night hotel. I mean, it doesn't include your airfare, although there is an airfare package. So you have the opportunity to fly over with the group, and then they'll meet you at the airport and literally take you to the hotel. If you want to fly on your own, you want to make your own reservations. Sometimes people want to use points or find a really cheap flight or want to go a few days earlier or later. Um, you, it's just up to you then to get to the hotel, but it includes your first ho hotels accommodation, then they'll do an orientation at the hotel, and then you'll actually get assigned to your apartments and taken to your apartments. It includes your apartment accommodations, including the electricity and all of those good things, the wireless access, the orientation to Florence that will occur basically in those first two days. Um, it includes a guided trip to Siena and San Germano. That bottom picture down there is actually um, Siena. Well, that was one of the ones I took when I went um, to Siena. Siena. The um, AIFS staff is also available to you, and there's a 24-hour emergency contact, and that's not a, you know, it's 2 in the morning and I don't really know um, what's the best bar to go to contact. That's it. There's an emergency kind of contact, um, but they are there, so they, you have this um, kind of backup system. So you're out there on your own, but there's individuals that you can contact if you need anything. They also ask that you, um, if you do go on trips, for instance, that, that you let them know, and that's... They're not checking in. You can go wherever you want to. But just so that you know, they know where, where people are at, so that if you don't call, come back okay, and your mom calls, they can actually say what country you were in last. So the idea is that they, they provide kind of a safety net there, um, but you still have your freedom to go do whatever you would like to. They also have a lot of subsidized cultural activities. And I don't have the list up next. But um, those things include things like um, they typically have a pizza making class, a cooking class. They try and do a soccer game. And they'll do a whole host of other activities. And those are an additional charge, but they're very low cost. They might be like 10 euros, 20 euros. Um, my colleague who went to Barcelona, he did a cooking class in Barcelona, and it was like about 10 euros. Um, he wanted to go back with his wife and do it, and it was like 125 euros. So they're at a significant discount. Um, they also plan enough of them so that everybody has the opportunity to go if they choose to. So that's a great opportunity to kind of go get, get a feel of Florence and get to hang out with other um, students doing an activity. It doesn't include the flight, and I mentioned that we do have a flight option, and the flight option is $965, including all of the fees. And it basically, if you take that flight, you go over with the group and you come back with the group. Um, it is not required. You can make your own reservations, but it's actually a really good, they got a really good deal in terms of the, the flight and um, all of that set up. So you'll have the opportunity at the time you do the application to let them know if you want to take the flight or not. It's totally optional. Tuition is also not included, and the textbooks aren't included. There may be some additional academic field trips, although some of those are also already included, um, and any extra weekend trips, and I'll talk more about those in a moment, um, but those would be an additional cost, but they're totally optional. And then again, you have to get your passport. The, it does include insurance, but there are some upgrade options. Um, there's a damage deposit. It doesn't include your meals, so 
people often ask, like, how much more do I need to cover you know, living expenses? And that really depends on whether you want to eat out every day or if you're going to make your sandwich and go to lunch and take it with you to lunch. So um, you really can afford, can make it more affordable or more expensive, depending on your particular options. And then any extras, if you want to do some extra trips or um, anything else you plan to do, or shopping, if you have a big shopping bug, um, you want to make sure you bring your additional money for that as well. The cool thing about this, though, is that if you get the BOG fee waiver and it covers your tuition here, that BOG fee waiver will cover your tuition there as well. Okay. So again, that's kind of a nice thing. The other part is the financial aid. If you get received financial aid here, you get that same financial aid award, you can apply it to the program fees. So that can help really bring down the program fees. Um, and there are also some, we'll talk a little bit about scholarships in a moment. Then there's an optional meal plan in Florence. And London, I don't think, has one, but Florence does, which is nice. And it's 30 meal vouchers, and you can use them for lunch or dinner at several restaurants around town. Um, and it's a $475. But the nice thing about meals in Florence is they're kind of an event. It's not like you just like grab, drive through Burger King and grab your food and go. You have the antipasto, you have the, like, the appetizer, you have the premier piatto, the segundo piatto. Um, and each of those here, like I, when I would go there, I'd get just the premier piatto and it's a, it's a plate of spaghetti. Well, it's a plate of spaghetti for the first course, and the second course is the main course. So um, when we're talking about meals here, it's not just a burger kind of deal. It's, it's a more inclusive meal, including your beverage and such. So um, it's a great option, totally optional. Some people choose to do it, some people don't. Um, it's totally up to you. The other thing I love about Florence is I took this picture here. Um, a lot of the, the, the dining establishments, there's a lot of like small restaurants, and you'll find when you get there, you'll find your favorites. Um, but they have this outdoor seating, and so you kind of walk along, and there's people sitting outside drinking their wine, and there's sometimes music, and it's kind of like it shows in the movies. It's really just a picturesque experience. Right. So subsidized activities. I mentioned these already. Um, I actually just saw the list from last spring, and they had something going on like all of the time. That schedule hasn't been set yet. Typically, they have to figure out when the soccer games are to get those booked and then book around it and such. Um, but they will have a list of optional activities for you um, to participate in as well. As far as what you can do in town, it's really more what can't you do, okay? There's, I'm, I love to walk, so it's a great walking city. I, when I was there, I was only there a short period of time. I can't wait to go back. Um, but I kind of just walk around and get a feel for the city. You've got these nice open plaza areas. You have beautiful architecture. Um, and you, we will get the opportunity as part of one of the classes to actually go in the UPC and see some of the inside of some of those buildings, the museums, and the art, the, um, the stuff that's available there to see is the things you learn about in your art classes here, but it's a completely different experience when you go over there and actually get to see it. I actually even like the artwork on the outside of the buildings. Um, it's just kind of amazing to see the intricacy um, of everything through there. They have the bubbly gardens. Um, they have all sorts of shopping. And you can kind of tell my bias. I can't do a presentation without pictures of the gelato. Um, <laughs> I, love, I love the gelato. Um, they're shopping, and if you wanted to do the Prada, the Guess, they've got all of those things there. Um, if you want to do the shopping like me, which is more of the um, kind of the more flea market, out on the street sort of deal, that's available too. Question? What was that? Yeah, 965 bucks, nine round trip. It's like $500 for the airfare and then like 300 or something for the fees. It's just kind of the way it goes. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of things. So kind of any level of what you'd be interested in, you can find there. Um, the food, this is actually one of the, um, up, up, up above one of the markets, they have a nice open um, area with lots of different food options. But the food there is just, it's amazing. Like I said, I did not have enough time to be able to do it justice, um, but I definitely tried. So optional trips. So again, you can do, arrange your own day trips. We will actually include a Siena trip um, with, that's included in your program fees. The weekend trips, which are extra, they haven't set those specifically, but typically there will be two or three. And they've done Venice, they've done Rome, they've done Sorrento in the past. I've only heard only good things about people who've gone, from people who've gone on those trips. They include the, the price, which typically, a lot of them run around about 300 euros, but that includes all the transportation, the hotel, any entry to any museums or activities that they include, and it's all set up for you. And AIFS does a really good job. They don't put you in like the kind of, we're not talking hostile level hotels. We may not be talking the Ritz-Carlton, but they put you in really nice, kind of at least three-star level hotels. So um, in talking with them, they said, you might be able to do it for less money if you stayed in hostels and so forth, 
but the amount of money you might be able to save is not commensurate to what you're going to be able to get. Because the nice thing about AIFS is they do this all the time. And so their buying power goes a lot farther. And they're able to get much better deals than you and I would be able to get on our own. So again, something to keep in mind if you're thinking about, you know, do I want to have spending money or not? Um, and they do this also at the London trip. You'll also have um, a, a weekend travels available as well, too. All right, so Italy. Okay. We've got Florence here. You've got lots of Italy to explore. But the nice thing about those three-day weekends is you also have the rest of Europe to explore. So again, lots of opportunities to kind of branch out, try new things, see new places, um, and so forth. So in terms of language, I've been asked, like, do I have to know Italian to go? And the answer is no, absolutely not. We actually will offer through the program a conversational seminar. It's not a course like you would take here for units and then big tests and things like that. But it's basically, it'll be either Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday during the lunch hour. And it basically teaches you some of the basic things, how to order food and how to get around town, and just things that might make your, your trip there a little bit more enjoyable to be able to converse with individuals who are there. Um, but when I was over there, I found that most individuals spoke, actually, they normally spoke three or more languages. But most of them spoke English, and I could get by just fine with my English, which was nice. But that's also, again, included in the program itself. I had to put some pictures in randomly. All right. So that's the basics of the program. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually open it up for some questions. Um, actually, in the interest of time, I'm actually going to pass it over to um, talking about our summer program. Um, but before I do that, actually, let me ask any if there are any questions about the, the, the press presentation so far, things that you haven't covered. Yes, you're so glad. Now. All right, do you want to go back? All right. So. Actually, we've got the Florence Summer Program. So same city, a little bit different program. Hi, I'm uh, Bill Wrightson. I've been involved in study abroad for 20 years now. I did the same thing Marsh is doing. I did that in the spring of 97, and then again in the spring of 2003, and AFS approached me about a summer program. And so 2005, this summer program began. And the purpose of the summer program is to offer students an opportunity, many of the things that Marcia just talked about, uh, in a five-week program, which makes it much more likely that more people can go. And it's not, <coughs> it's about half the cost. The only thing that is more expensive is the airfare, because we're, we're going high season. We leave, I'm working out the dates now, but we're leaving probably May 24th and coming back June 25th, all right? And <clears throat> so I know what's involved in the full semester program, so it's, it's included in, in the summer program. But like I said, primarily it's there <clears throat> as an option. But there have been, I'd say, eight to 10 students who didn't choose it as an option. <laughs> they did the summer program and they came back into the semester program, or they did the semester program and then came back in, uh, to, do the, to do the summer program. Now, <clears throat> in the summer program, okay, as, as Marsh said, all the apartments are in the historical center. So you're going to be living around Italians, and the advantage of taking conversational Italian is that when you go to the market, and going to a market in Italy is one of my greatest pleasures of life. Paul can attest to that. I mean, I love, all right? <laughs> And I remember we, w we were there, what, three, four years ago? Four years ago? Uh, three. Three years ago, and <clears throat> we were at a market, and I was ordering a few things here and there. And Paul said something like, I didn't know you spoke Italian that well. And I said, that's my food ordering Italian. <laughs> uh, that's, that's my pragmatic Italian that you get to, get to learn really, really quickly. But uh, if you like coffee, because uh, <laughs> they have this drink in Italy that many of you probably have never had before. It's called a cappuccino. <laughs> I know you have ordered it, and I know one has been placed in front of you, but it ain't close to the same. All right? And besides, it's about a euro 20. But part of the routine of Italian life is going to your local bar, getting a cappuccino and a, and a, and a brioche or some kind of pastry in the morning standing. <laughs> and if you know a little bit Italian, <clears throat> about your third visit to that bar, the, the barista will recognize that you're not just this one-shot wonder who's come into his place one time, who he'll never see again. You've made an investment in living in their city. 
and they'll start opening up and start talking. And if you can carry on some basic conversation, I think it enhances the experience for everybody involved because the Italians appreciate any effort to speak their language. Uh, <clears throat> so like I said, the apartments in the historical center, the advantage is that all the apartments have a full kitchen, right? Which means you can save money by cooking in your apartment. But as I suggested earlier, my favorite part of a full kitchen is going out in the market, mingling with Italians, getting the food to bring back. Uh, <clears throat> the class that I teach is um, Italian history and culture. It's a class that I made up 14 years ago, so I go to Italy every year. All right, but retroactive as of August 2016, the class has, satisfies I get C3B. So it satisfies, you get four units of GE <coughs> requirement for, for CSU, UC, and basically almost any other four-year college that you want to go to. Uh, <coughs> we have welcoming and departing meals. All ground transportation in Italy is, is included. For example, we have a three-day trip to Rome that's included in the program, so there's no extra cost for that. Uh, <coughs> we also have a wine-tasting excursion that is relatively popular among the students. Uh, <coughs> and this wine-tasting excursion is certainly is wine-tasting. If you're in Italy, part of a culture is wine. Uh, <coughs> but it's also an excursion into the Chianti countryside, uh, some place that you could not readily get to, easily get to, through public transportation. So you're able to go out there and it's not like you might think in terms if you've had an experience wine tasting in Napa, Sonoma, Amador, we're the only ones. We go to two separate wineries, we taste wine, and we have a lovely lunch in between the tastings. Uh, <coughs> guided museum tours to the Uffizi. Marcia had the Uffizi up, greatest Renaissance art museum in the world. The Bargello, primarily uh, sculpture. And there's also um, what's included, they, for a little over two years, they were restoring a uh, museum with works that used to be on Il Duomo, the, the cathedral. And it, it, when I saw it, um, I saw it in June of 2016, and, and I, I had goosebumps. And now it's, it's part of my program. It's a combo ticket that includes the museum, uh, walking up the bell tower, walking up the, the, the dome of the, of the cathedral, as well as the baptistry. Uh, <coughs> here's just a little bit, and it's one of those things that probably means a hell of a lot more to me than anybody else, but what they've done in this museum <coughs> is have this room that replicates the whole length of the facade of the cathedral of the 15th century, about a third of the height, but the whole length and they put all the statues that were out there in, this, in the 15th century in the various nooks that, where they belonged from the beginning. It's, it's breathtaking. It's one of the most <coughs> wonderfully organized museums in the world. 12 hours of Italian language instruction, which is basically not going to make anybody fluent, but it helps in a, in a couple ways. The banter with your barista, uh, polite conversation, asking where something is, is fairly simple, right? But you also learn <clears throat> how to be more polite. Because American students tend to go to Italy and they get chow happy, right? Chow, 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 chow. And they say chow to everybody they meet, every Italian they may meet. I'll tell you, if you go into a store and there's a 75-year-old <clears throat> woman working in that store and you say chow to her, that's rude. <laughs> and you need to know that. Now, if she says chow to you, it's fine, All right, from that. Uh, <clears throat> Three-day excursion to Rome in a hotel in the historical center. This last year, we got a new hotel that was right by Piazza Navona, which is basically the, the heart of, of Rome, with a rooftop paris, terrace with a <laughs> ballpark 300 degree view of the entire city. So you're on one side of the terrace, you can see St. Peter's, you go on the other side, you can see the Colosseum. So what do you feel like, religious or ancient? Huh? Uh, <clears throat> all right, I already mentioned the Chianti wine tasting excursion. Uh, the, the class that I teach is designed to 
uh, <coughs> enhance and inform your experience living in Italy by learning more about Italian history and culture with the focus on the Italian Renaissance. I have um, brochures for 2017. I'm working out with Italy now. The dates of the program, tentatively, it will leave May 20th, a Sunday, and come back June 25th, which is, which is a Monday. I just changed because they said, well, you really want to leave on the 24th? Because June 24th is San Giovanni in Florence. St. John the Baptist is the patron saint of Florence. And there's big festival, there's parades, and there's fireworks uh, <coughs> during the evening. So we're going to leave the, the day after. <coughs> and again, airfare <coughs> is a separate option. The cost of the program the last two years has been $39.95. <coughs> and airfare, however, is more expensive because of when we go. Last year, it was like $1,700. And again, same with the full semester program. If you want to travel independently, after, in particular, you have to arrange your own airfare. Anybody wanting to do that, I can easily help. Right? So sign up if you want contact information. If you want a 2017 brochure to just kind of look at, get a feel, feel free to, to grab that. Right? Any questions? Can I say something about Gilman? That's all I forgot about that. Uh, one last thing. Thank you. Uh, in a couple of weeks, on September 14th, in this room, during this time, there will be another presentation that is related to study abroad, and that's with regard to the Gilman Scholarship. The Gilman Scholarship is a federal government scholarship to promote study abroad. Uh, there's two prerequisites. You have to be eligible for the Pell Grant, and you actually have to take a college class abroad. All right. Uh, so on Thursday the 14th, um, one of my students who went to Italy with me got $4,000 and the Gilman Scholarship, and he's going to talk about, I mean, part of the requirement of getting it is explaining it to other people. And so he's going to talk about the application process, kind of what, what's required, what they're looking for. Uh, and he, like several students in the past, he went to Florence with me in... 2016, all right? <clears throat> and then he used that experience, which is kind of one of the things you learn in graduate school. <laughs> you kind of feed off your experience to apply for money in the future, <clears throat> talking about things you've already done. So he used the experience of his 20, um, 2016 study abroad in Florence with me to apply for a Gilman to do an independent study abroad in 2017, that's what he got the $4,000 for. Another student went with me in 2012. He transferred to Davis. He used that experience to apply for a Gilman, and he's got $5,000 to study in uh, <coughs> Copenhagen, Denmark for a year. All right? So <coughs> think about study abroad. I mean, <coughs> this is what I've come to say in my classes now, and it's like, <coughs> Study abroad might not be the most life-enriching experience you'll ever have, but it sure as heck belongs in the, co in the discussion. <laughs> it raises the bar in terms of what you think is possible to accomplish in your life. Thanks again. Absolutely. I do want to reiterate what he said about the, the Gilman presentation. We actually do presentations on study abroad throughout the district. However, the Gilman presentation is only going to be here at ARC. And let me tell you, some of the students I'm talking to are like, really? I'm like, yeah, really. You're on the 14th, so you want to be here for that because um, it is an amazing opportunity. And you don't actually have to use it for your second trip. You can actually use it on your first trip. Um, there are other scholarship opportunities. So when we're talking about fine funding, uh, finding the uh, experience, whether it's a summer program or a semester program. Any scholarships you apply for for college, you can apply to this program. They don't have to be specific to study abroad, but there are some specific study abroad pro uh, scholarships available as well, like the Gilman, which can be up to $5,000, which is significant. We also have, um, there's also other, other scholarships out there too. So again, if you're willing to put the time in and do some applications, you may find that you can fund a large portion of your 
program. The other thing about this too is that as you start thinking about it now, um, there's things like GoFundMe accounts. You can talk to your parents about like, okay, I really don't want Christmas gifts. What I really would like to do is be able to have that meal plan in Florence. Or what I'd really like to do is have an extra, extra spending money or some help toward the program. So again, thinking about kind of ways that you can reach out to your friends, family, and community to maybe help you achieve this. Because it really is, I would say it's life changing. It really is an amazing opportunity. I did, I do want to talk a little bit about the Summer London program, which I got to teach in um, summer before last, and will be happening this coming summer with Mark Stewart. And he does a beautiful job um, laying out a really amazing program. The classes are Monday through Thursday, so you get the weekends to do travel. Um, and it was always interesting on Monday when I would see the students, I get to hear all the fun, exciting places they went to. Like, we went to the Netherlands, we went to you know, Paris. I'm like, wow, okay, I was still here. Um, in London, totally ecstatic. So um, the way he has it set up, though, is you start the week on Monday at a play, so we went to the Shakespeare um, Globe and we saw Taming of the Shrew. We have classes on Tuesday, Thursday morning, and then Tuesday, Thursday afternoon, we have guided tours of different museums. And Wednesday, we have an all-day excursion where we get there at 8.30 in the morning, hop the bus, and we went out to Stonehenge. We went to Stratford-upon-Avon. We saw Shakespeare's house, Freud's museum, um, so many exciting things that, um, again, if you were designing a tourist trip, you would hit all of this and, the, and we hit more of it. But we do it in a way, um, where he brings it back into the, the class context in terms of what are we learning about British life and culture. And it's a really um, amazing program. So if you have the opportunity and you want to go to London, that summer program's great. If you have a little bit more time, the, the London uh, full semester program is an amazing opportunity as well. Again, very similar to here. I didn't talk much about the life and culture class. And the nice thing about the life and culture class, for instance, in Italy, is you're going to get to hear lectures from Italians about various things, uh, experts from um, topics on art and history and politics. You're also going to have activities into the city where you go to the Uffizi and such, and then you'll have some class time with your instructor as well. And that will be similar to what you get in London. So similar options in London. Now, for the, do you want to stand up? i to make you stand up. All right. So for London, um, you actually will get, be getting, we have a consortium of four different districts, and each district sends one faculty member, and so each semester it changes what classes are offered based on the faculty that are going, and you guys are lucky enough to have Christina Casper Denman going to London. Hey. So, we'll just, everyone who leaves now, we're just going to sign you up, so that's, that's what happened, so. So we do have a little bit of a glitch with London because there's supposed to be four faculty members and so far we know three of them. So the fourth one's kind of like a mystery faculty member which is going to be fun. But what we do, it, um, it could be you. Um, I certainly would love to hang out with you in London because we would never go to class because we would be doing research. Because one of the classes I'm teaching is archaeology which has a good historical overlap. Basically, it's an excuse for us to hang out at the museums because the museums are free in London, like the British Museum, which is awesome because the British Museum actually has one thing that's British and the rest was stolen from the rest of the world. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the archaeology class or the magic witchcraft and religion class, which is going to be awesome because there's so many amazing places to go. And of course, the physical anthropology class, people like Jane Goodall, for example, very important. People like, you know, the Darwin guy, very important. So as Marcia was saying, the same sort of concepts with a homestay, with sharing an apartment, a little more expensive because, as Marcia pointed out, very much a bustling city. But you do get zone one and zone two for your buses, for the tube, and that's for the whole time that you're there. We do have the British Life and Culture class. As Marcia pointed out, 12 units for all of your classes. The British Life and Culture class does include special lectures from politics, from economics. But for my class, for my archaeology class, we actually have a student who graduated from here. Years ago, she said, I want to do archaeology. I'm like, great, where? She's like, Scotland. I'm like, OK, I can't, I just, I, yeah, where? She's like, I'm going to go to Aberdeen. I'm like, sure, do that. So she goes, and she gets her bachelor's degree, and she picks up a husband on the way, which, I mean, that's not included either. Um, <laughs> but. But she and her husband, her husband has a master's degree, she has her bachelor's, they're going to come guest lecture for us about doing archaeology in Britain because they've gone like all over the place. So that's something that we, you know, we, that's an AR graduate who's able to do that sort of thing. So all the things that you would normally do on your own, again, weekends are available if you want to hang out. There's so many parks around. There's, I mean, everything that you can imagine about London. If you like the ancient stuff, we've got the ancient stuff. You want the modern stuff, we've got the modern stuff. And of course, Marcia didn't mention this, but something to remember. Certain days of the week are actually cheaper. Mondays, if you go to the theater, 
If you go like the day of, you can get single tickets for incredibly cheap, right? Yeah, that was one of my things. I'm like, oh, it's Tuesday night, what do I do? I'm like, I could go to a movie or I could go see Wicked. Hmm. So for like basically less than 20 bucks, I would go see Wicked. It's awesome. And then you would sing along with it because it's like the 10th time you've seen no, it. And, you know. I sing badly, so they would hit me in the back. Do you get discount tickets if you sing badly on purpose? Like you sit like right here where we can drown you out. That's, no. The nice thing too about the programs with London is they do have really good kind of buying power. So when you get se seats through AFS and if you're there, if they have a program where they had some extra seats, they'll actually sell them to the rest of the students. So they'll open it up and say, hey, does anybody want to go see this? And you're not getting the nosebleed seats for 20 minutes. You're getting like the good seats. So. so the question is, are you doing homework overseas? Yes, absolutely. You will, you will, absolutely. But you're doing it in 12 weeks and more importantly, if you're doing my assignments, they're all on Canvas. I know, we all feel the same way about Canvas. It's a strong, deep, abiding feeling how I feel about Canvas. But also, if you end up taking my classes in London, I don't have textbooks. So that's one less thing for you to schlepper. I know, right? So you just save money on tech. It's like an instant discount. What you should do, plan now. Here's, here's how it's going to work. You should go to Florence, come back, do all your laundry, do a summer program, Come back, do all your laundry, because we don't leave. I mean, my goodness, we don't leave till September, right? So you have plenty of time to hit up all of your friends. You can do like a GoFundMe, you can do a Kickstarter, do one for each. And then think about all the experiences. They'll, like, they'll accept you into grad school instantaneously, which by the way, not that this is the place to talk about it, but you can go from your bachelor straight into a PhD program with some of the programs that you're interested in. And how much better are you qualified because you've studied abroad, right? You're already the smartest people on campus because you're here. Plus, I don't have to learn another language. I mean, I barely speak English, and I'll probably make it in London. So that's another thing to think about. So thank you, Marcia. All right, so we're going to wrap up, and I'm going to make sure I have some time for questions, because I'm sure that you guys do have some. You've been very quiet, which is awesome. Um, but one of the things to keep in mind is that any travel abroad really does broaden your opportunity. Um, it stretches you. It gets you outside your comfort zone, um, which really is empowering. And that's one of the things I saw with students when they came back was just their confidence, their, their sense that they could do just about anything. So, All right, questions, yeah. Sure, sure. Um, there is a brochure back there on the Paris trip. It's, it's a two-page deal. It's, it, there is either. It just doesn't say real broad Paris for some reason on the top. Um, I don't know as much about that program, um, but it is, I believe, around $4,000. I think it's five weeks. Don't count, quote me on all these details. Um, it's taught by an instructor. This is the first year that it's running, which is why I don't know as much about it. Um, but it is um, going to be a history class in Paris. So again, I'm sure it will include some of the museums and things like that, but I don't know the specifics of all of that. So I would recommend getting one of the brochures, putting your name down and click checking the Paris, and I will get your your name to um, Professor Maurimer, Mar 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 um, and they can send you more information and updates. Some of the summer programs don't have all the details. I think his is set. Um, Florence is almost set. London is still working out some details. So all of those details may not be fully available, but I will get you na your name to the person who can follow up, and they will. Absolutely. So I'm sorry I don't have more, but there is a little bit. The cost and stuff is laid out there. Jeff? So yeah, so the professor in Florence has, or the professor going to Paris has been to Florence and talked with Bill about his program, and it'll be fairly similar in terms of the layout. So it'll be amazing, basically. It'll be amazing. So, other questions? Yeah. You know, that would be really independent. It would, you know, I, I could probably give you a better idea if I talked to you a little bit more, but it really depends on what you're looking for. If you want that more connected feeling to locals, the homestay is nice, because there's literally someone there who, if you're in Florence, speaks the language, um, um, and who can tell you the local things to do. If you want the kind of more um, kind of out, out away from home, like you've been living at home and you really just want to be out on your own, then the apartment might be good. The nice thing about the homestay, though, is it isn't like, it isn't like staying with mom and dad. There is no curfew. There is no, they don't have to check in with them and see where you're going. So it's really just kind of a difference if you'd like a home environment or if you'd like the apartment environment. Um, and sometimes, at least in London, the home stays maybe a little further out than the apartments, um, but they're all still relatively close. So it, it, when I went to London, um, we had people that did both, and both of them really liked whatever they chose. So I don't, I don't think you can go wrong with either one, honestly. It just kind of depends what your, your thoughts are on that. So uh, Others, yeah. 
Yeah, I would look at past history for the weather. London, um, when I did the London Summer Program, we went with a guide and we went out to um, Stonehenge. And she says, I've been doing this for like 20 years or something. She goes, I have never been to Stonehenge when it didn't rain. I cannot promise that again. Um, but we had this beautiful day. And then we got in the, in the bus on the way back and it poured and we all just slept and we're happy. So um, London, it will rain um, pretty much. I'm assuming fall will be very similar to what's in summer. Um, in Florence, for the semester I'm going, it will be a little bit cooler in the, in the beginning and it'll start to warm up. Um, but you can kind of look at the historical trends and get an idea um, for what, how to pack and such. We also, if you do the program, what we do have is we have, because um, we have, it's four different districts that are all kind of bringing students. We will have a dinner here probably at ARC, for all of the Florence students from ARC that are going. And we have um, former students come and talk about that, and they give you all their tips on packing and things you should see and things you shouldn't do and all that stuff. Um, and then we'll also have a meeting at one of the four districts with all of the students who are going. So there'll probably be about 20 students from each district go, but there's typically 80 to 100 students total that go from, you know, California community colleges. So, other question, yeah. You know, that's a really good question. Um, I think th there have been situations where individuals have had to um, go home. A lot of times it's they go home and then they go back and finish the program, depending on the emergency. Um, it, it will probably depend on the individual colleges, plant the things, and I can't really tell. It would also depend on at what point in the semester you're at. Um, there are things like medical withdrawals and things like that. Um, in terms of refund of the program fees, if you leave early, there is no refund because they've already had to pay for your apartment the whole time. So. Um, and if you do anything really stupid, which none of you would do, because no one from our district ever does, but if you were to do something stupid, like get yourself arrested, or things along those lines, or just stop coming to class, they will kick you out of the program and send you home, because it is a study abroad program. So no, you shouldn't be locked in your apartment studying all the time, but you do have to show up for class. But you will want to, trust me. <laughs> all right, other questions? Uh, yeah, cash, or you can write the check directly to me. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, you can actually, um, it, for Florence, all of the, to, to sign up for the Florence program, you submit the application, and there's a $450 deposit. Okay, as soon as you pay that, you're basically, they will review your application. You want to do that before September 29th, because that gives you priority for the classes, and some of the classes will fill. The absolute deadline for applying is October 23rd. Um, the money is due December 1st. So you can basically, once you get accepted, you could start, you know, putting money in, Whenever you want to, you just have to have it all in there. Right away. Yes, yes. However, if make sure it's, clear. it's clear, yes. However, if you have financial aid, they will work with you and time the rest of the payments. Like if you have a certain amount of financial aid that will be coming in after that, they will work with you to time payments with those financial aid payments. So you don't have to, if you're getting a bunch of financial aid and that's how you're putting that toward the plan, but you don't get that by December 1st, they will actually work with you on that. But other than that, yes, you, they need the money up front because they need to secure the um, apartments and all of that stuff. Thank you. For the summer programs, in order to qualify, you have to be 18 at the time you leave. That's it. For the semester programs, you still have to be 18 at the time you leave, but you also have to have completed 12 college units and have a 2.25 GPA at the time you leave. So if this is your first semester and you're taking 12 units, as long as you get a 2.25, you're good to go. So that's what they're, they're gonna be looking at. Yes. Yeah, you can pay in separate chunks as long as it's all paid by the deadline. Yeah, so absolutely. So you could pay in every, if you get paid every two weeks, you can put a little bit of that right into that. AFS will be more than happy to, let, to take, take your money um, and help you get that paid down so that you don't have it all at once, like you don't have to you know, come up with a whole chunk. The other thing is, in, with this, the spring program, um, you'll be gone pretty much in January, but there are several um, scholarships available through, a, uh, through American River College. The deadline is typically in January, so even if we are gone, you can still apply for those. Obviously, those won't help you pay for it in advance, but anything you get will obviously be helpful in general. So um, the, the foundation scholarships, even if you don't do study abroad, the foundation scholarships are an amazing opportunity. So keep your eye open for those scholarship workshops, even if you're not going to study abroad, and take advantage of those. So, other questions? All right, well, I will be here if you have any questions, um, matter some of the other faculty, and feel free to put your name on the list, tell me what programs you want to go to, and we'll get you more information. Thank you for coming.